In the 1950s, nuclear power promised endless amounts of energy, too cheap to meter. But after over half a century, as groundbreaking as nuclear power has been, it hasn't been without its fair share of calamities and unanswered questions. But as the threat of global warming grows, a question remains, will sources like wind and solar be enough on their own? What if there was another nuclear option, one that was cleaner and safer and more efficient? Researchers in China may finally unveil a nuclear reactor that checks all those boxes. How do they do it? By using thorium. But what is thorium and how do thorium reactors work? And can they really make nuclear energy clean and safe? We thought those questions and more deserve a deeper dive today on Tupa Da Vinci. Special thanks to Extra for sponsoring this video. Build your credit score even without a credit card today using Extra. As much as we love wind and solar, some question whether they can truly provide enough clean, sustainable energy that we so desperately need. While nuclear energy has a questionable track record, it could potentially be an excellent source of abundant emission-free power. Before we go further, let's take a quick look at how traditional nuclear reactors work. As always, this is a significantly reduced overview. The full breadth of nuclear physics is just a little bit too much for a 10 minute video on YouTube. Every nuclear reactor on the grid today is a fission reactor, which we've covered in our videos on modular nuclear reactors, which you can check out here. This is separate from nuclear fusion, which we've also covered in a video here. Fission starts by finding an element with the right kind of nucleus. Certain elements like uranium and plutonium contain very large nuclei that can split into smaller nuclei when struck by neutrons. Once they split, they release energy as well as a bunch of fast-moving neutrons. These stray careening neutrons smash into more nuclei, breaking them apart and creating a chain reaction. That energy produces a steady amount of heat, which boils water, producing steam, which turns generators to produce electricity, which then power your computers or phones so you can watch more Tuba Da Vinci videos. It's a beautiful cycle. What makes nuclear power so attractive is that it can produce ample energy in a consistent manner without carbon emissions. A major win for the planet. Well, sort of. For all the benefits of nuclear energy, there are some major risks. The looming threat of meltdowns, the proliferation of nuclear weapons, nuclear waste with shelf lives of tens of thousands of years. All of these aspects have led some to give nuclear energy a big no thanks. But the truth is, many of these risks have less to do with nuclear energy as a whole and more to do with the specific elements used to produce those nuclear reactions, in particular, uranium. But what if there was a different element, one that was more common and could potentially produce even more energy than uranium, but without the risk of meltdown, nightmare weapons, and whose waste lasts hundreds, not tens of thousands of years? This then just might be the answer. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you thorium. So what is thorium? It's one of the 15 heavy metallic radioactive elements found at the bottom of the periodic table. Just two spaces lighter than uranium. Thorium was first isolated by Swedish chemist Johns Jacob Berzelius back in 1828. But it wasn't until about 70 years later that two chemists, Gerhard Schmidt and Marie Curie, both separately discovered thorium's radioactive nature. What makes thorium so attractive to researchers? Right now, most nuclear reactors use uranium. One specific isotope, uranium-235, is particularly attractive because of its highly fissile nature. The problem? Uranium-235 makes up less than 1% of naturally occurring uranium. So nuclear power facilities make do with the more common isotope, uranium-238. However, this isotope can't undergo fission on its own you first need to enrich the uranium to boost its proportions of uranium-235. This is where the problems begin. During the conversion process, uranium-238 transmutes into other fissile elements, U-239, which decays into neptunium-239, then finally plutonium-239, an active ingredient in nuclear bombs. But the fun doesn't stop there. Once uranium-235 burns down to about 0.3%, the fuel is depleted. However, it leaves some lovely parting gifts like americium, tectidium, and iodine, elements that can remain harmful for over 10,000 years, meaning there is no guaranteed safe way of storing it here on Earth. If you've been watching our show for a while, you've probably noticed that our backdrop has changed. And well, that's because we bought a new house. Luckily, our sponsor this week is Extra, the first debit card that helps you build your credit without a credit card. 
If you have dreams of buying a car, a house, or getting a small business loan, you're gonna need good credit. I've been building my credit since I was 16 years old, but for over 100 million Americans who either don't want or can't get a credit card, this is a big problem. Extra is the first debit card that lets you build your credit and earn reward points just like a credit card. Here's how it works. Users connect Extra to their existing bank account. Extra spots them for everyday purchases. Users auto pay Extra the next business day. At the end of the month, all payments are tallied up and reported to credit bureaus. Users also earn redeemable reward points just like they do with credit cards. We live in an age of incredible opportunity. Heck, I'm a full-time YouTuber, but it'll likely require access to capital and good credit. So sign up for Extra with the link in the description and start building your credit with a debit card today. Huge thanks to Extra and all of you for supporting the show. So how does this stack up to Thorium? To begin with, Thorium is a much more abundant material, three times more abundant than uranium. Plus, all but a trace of the world's thorium already exists as the ideal isotope, thorium-232, meaning no enrichment. Another major win for thorium is that overall, it is a much safer element to use than uranium. For one thing, it is not fissile on its own. But when thorium-232 absorbs another neutron, it becomes thorium-233, which quickly decays into protactinium-233. From there, it can be chemically separated into uranium-233, which is fissile. But the true benefit here is that because thorium itself is not fissile, it will never start to break down on its own. To start the reaction, you'd need to start throwing neutrons at it. To make the process stop, simply turn off the neutron source, and voila, the whole process shuts down. No rogue reactions. Better yet, Researchers estimate that thorium could be even more energy efficient, with one ton of thorium producing as much energy as 35 tons of uranium. And nuclear waste? While thorium is not entirely waste-free, it produces anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 times less waste than uranium. And the waste it does produce is significantly less radioactive, and only stays radioactive for about 500 years, which is way better than 10,000 years. Thorium could also significantly help curtail the proliferation of nuclear weapons. First, it doesn't produce plutonium, which again is a key component in nuclear weapons. Also, in creating uranium-232, the process can lead to a strong field of gamma radiation, which can enhance its traceability. This could present an ideal solution for countries like Iran and North Korea to have nuclear power without the fear of developing nuclear weapons. Thorium is versatile able to work in just about every type of nuclear reactor. When it comes to nuclear reactors, the two main categories are water-based or thermal reactors and molten salt reactors, with the latter gaining the most traction with thorium. The vast majority of reactors are thermal, meaning they require a moderator to slow down the fast neutrons to the right thermal level so that the fission can continue. The most common moderator is just good old fashioned H2O, water. Because of this, most reactors need to be built near a water source. Molten salt reactors use a liquid salt base, which gets heated to super hot temperatures over 450 degrees Celsius, and they have several benefits over their counterparts. First, because they don't require being near water, they can be built anywhere, even in remote locations. China's thorium reactor, which uses a fluoride-based salt, is being built in the Gobi Desert. Not only do these types of reactors open the doors for inland nations to develop their energy independence, but building the facilities in more remote locations also reduces their impact if something should go wrong. The best benefit of molten salt reactors over thermal reactors is that they're way safer. The thermal process involved in water-based reactors requires constant monitoring and can lead to major problems. Every major nuclear disaster, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, Fukushima, all had issues with cooling failures in the thermal reactor. Molten salt reactors, on the other hand, use molten salt as both the coolant and the fuel which allows the system to self-regulate. The liquid fuel runs through a reaction chamber filled with graphite rods, which slow down the speed of the neutrons. To stop the chain reaction, all you need to do is remove the rods. Should a more catastrophic event take place in a liquid fluoride thorium reactor, it would automatically drain the liquid fuel into the storage tank away from the graphite. And just like that, the reaction would come to a halt. So we have a safer, more efficient nuclear reactor that can be built anywhere, can't be weaponized, and can't melt down. While molten salt reactors are very promising, they still have some hurdles to overcome. For one thing, melting salts requires an immense amount of heat. At such high temperatures, that salt can corrode the reactor's structure, requiring more protection, which means higher cost. 
So far, molten salt reactors have not proven themselves cost effective. Then there's the thorium itself. The jury is still out whether the cost of extracting and converting thorium into fissile materials is less expensive than uranium. The main roadblock is simply a lack of research due to, you guessed it, a lack of funding. In the US, nuclear programs grew during the Cold War, but the goal was not simply a warm light for the whole world to share. It was to build bombs. Once it was determined that uranium held potential as both a weapon and a fuel source, the US basically stopped looking for other elements. And since thorium can't be produced into plutonium, it was pushed to the wayside. Outside the US, countries like China and India have continued pursuing thorium, even though the US has not. As of now, China plans to test its thorium reactors, which could prove itself a game changer in the world of clean energy. For now, we'll have to wait and see. While renewables like wind and solar have seen a major growth in the past decade, is there a chance they might not be enough? What if we need a reliable baseload energy source that works rain or shine? Thorium then might just be what the doctor ordered. And with the benefits so vast, it's no wonder so many are excited about thorium's future in energy. But what do you think? Is thorium worth exploring as a nuclear power source? With all the risk nuclear power poses, should we just abandon it altogether? Let us know what you think in the comments below. So that is a look at the thorium reactor. It's interesting. A lot of you guys have requested this video and I do think the technology is pretty great. If we are going to pursue further nuclear power plants, I think thorium really is where we should be investing even though it will require some retooling and some reimagining. I think it's pretty promising stuff. Again, not gonna be easy, molten salt. You could imagine the engineering challenges involved with, with all of that, but something we should pursue nonetheless. I apologize if you heard background noises in this video. I'm in my backyard, we just moved. This is the new headquarters for Tiba Da Vinci, but our office and our studio is not ready. So we will be shooting wherever we can for a little while. So bear with us like that. All right, so that is a look at thorium salt reactors. Thank you so much for watching. And if you wanna be a rock star supporter of this show, take a look at our patrons on Patreon and our YouTube channel memberships. We call you guys the 2-Bit Tribe. Come join us on Discord, we can chat. You guys can help us pick topics, review scripts, do some writing, help out with random stuff, and just generally meet up and chat. All for a small monthly subscription you can cancel anytime. All right, that does it for us. Take a look around. We have a ton of videos that we think you're going to love, especially around this topic. And until next time, remember I'm Ricky with 2-Bit Da Vinci, and the future is gonna be awesome.